Evening, everybody, or morning. I, I guess we upload this in the morning, don't we? Fuck. I guess it depends on your time zone. Fuck it. It's the shut your mouth. Right somebody. Yeah, it was just, just throw it all out. Good evening, morning, night, noon. Uh, uh, Twilight, but not the movies, because those are stupid. Uh, good dawn. <laughs> uh, fuck it. So, hey, it's... Good long Sunday. It's uh, Shut Your Mouth Lounge 41, right? Yeah, correct. Right, so I got here with me, Addy. Hey. And Pink. Hey. And today we're going to be going over just a short little list of topics, because I need to get this done as soon as possible, because I'm about to fight a hurricane. With his bare hands. I was about to say. Hurricane Florence Buddy. versus Alex. One night well, only, you know. in North Carolina, well, you know. loser leaves town. <laughs> <I was a> <laughs> Addy will never can, get to can, say can what you, he wants. Can, can, can you slap a tornado? I can try, like, can you... I can try, but it'll probably give me a fucking DDT. But... <laughs> can you try him possible? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what you referred to, but I, so I guess maybe? Matt, Har Matt Hardy's team. Oh, okay. Uh, which is this, which is fitting because aren't they from North Carolina? Yes. Yes, they are. I actually I do not live very far away from them. Like it's. Why don't you break in? <laughs> like, the, the the worst thing that he can do is steal your soul. <laughs> the nice thing about living so close to where they grew up is I can see. Oh boy, they came from a really trashy part of the state. Uh. So this one's a little bit of Addy news. The most unexpected of fighting game returns, fucking Samurai Showdown is getting a new game. Yes. <laughs> and this... I'm Spanish now. <laughs> and... <laughs> God. and this is going to be number six, right? Yes. No, 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 no. This is going to be number seven. Six is a dream fight that's also seven bucks on PlayStation right now. <laughs> ah, okay. But yeah. Um, we haven't seen a lot in this trailer. We saw a Jubei, we saw Homaru. Um, I, I definitely, we, we definitely saw Nakururu, worst piece of shit ever. Um, well, of course they well, have. Isn't she? The, isn't she the bird girl that got to be in KOF? Yes. Of course they brought her in. She's evidently like the fucking waifu or some shit. She's like eight. You. My point still stands. Like, what do you mean she's eight? Like, you, when has that ever fucking stopped Japan? That actively encourages Japan. Are you fucking kidding? But yeah, so... The age um, of fucking consent there is probably four years old. Jesus. Okay, anyways, you said Hayomaru. Isn't that the guy that you uh, fucking love? No, he's just the main character. Oh. So it's... Yeah, my, my, main, my main is Kazuki. Oh. Okay. Well, I, yeah. Do yeah. they are? The, do you think they've got a good chance of getting in the game, or are they kind of a rare one like Mister Big? I mean, they have been in the last two games, so I hope that they're they're gonna be in. Oh, all right. So they're more like K, where they got introduced recently and have just stuck around since then. Yeah. Well, I say recently. K was introduced twenty fucking years ago. What? <laughs> uh. But yeah, um, like. There's a there's a couple of interesting characters that may or may not be featured. Like nicotine definitely won't be featured. I don't Darn see nicotine. I don't see nicotine I, returning. Type now. I mean, he is in six. So if if one of us buys it, then <laughs> nicotine <laughs> will be there. But yeah, so um, I don't think he's gonna be in Angel Angel and Soldier, not Soldier, <laughs> Soldier Boy Talon. Yes, the best fighting game character. Anyway. <laughs> So yeah, Anja and um, whatever, Soja, I think, Suija, something like that. Did you say yeah, nicotine? I... Yes. There's a character called Alcohol Nicotine, I want to say, or something like that. Let me yeah. check. Nicotine Caffeine. Yeah, Caffeine Nicotine. That's his name. Oh, so his, his uh, special ability is he gives you cancer? That's why he's not featured in, in, in any later installments, you know? Uh, he dies from cancer. <laughs> He was too, too strong. He gave himself cancer. <laughs> yeah. It was the weakness of his powers. Yeah, Nic Nicotine was... Nicotine was Pink's character in 
Samurai Showdown 2. Oh, was he the big guy? No. No, he was a little frail old man. Ah, okay. You say pink character, I think either massively, morbidly obese guy or girl with massive boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, by the way, pink in, um, I own five and Nicotine's like nephew is in that. So, <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, I, I don't see those characters returning because basically, um, the thing is, from what I understand, Enja and so Soija are just the people who give Kaz uh, Kazuki and Sogatsu their powers. So they're basically more or less Echo Fighters, only they... Well, they differ in how they use their powers, but, you know, there's still a lot of similarities. Then... Who I else know Yori's, be... la yeah. Yori's lasted as long as he has. I mean, I, I guess so, but Yori wasn't introduced as an... Uh, as a an explanation for the powers of two of the new characters. Was he? Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like it was the other way around where, like, wasn't Rugal's minion chicks the people who gave Yori his powers? I don't know. I forgot her I forgot well, whatever, their names. Whatever, let's whatever. Let's stop talking about SNK's asinine lore. Let's keep going. Just say, say what's vital about the game, Addy. Um, yeah, so... Um, this game has a new new graphics. It looks weird to me. <laughs> new because... graphics? Who would have thought? Yeah, I mean, two D sprites I've... or actual three yeah. D graphics? I want to say it's two point five D. So actual three D models on a, you know, on a two D two D plane. Oh, so uh, wait, wait, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Like Mortal Kombat, where it's still three D. It's just that they are fighting on a two D plane. Or are you talking like Guilty Gear Ig Exert, where? They try to make 3D models look 2D. I want to say it's closer to Guilty, Guilty Gear. Okay. But yeah, that and the thing is, they um well they tried to go to go for a more cel shaded look from what I remember, but I can I can actually check. So one second. But yeah, so they from what I remember, they tried to go for a more cel shaded look, but it, you can still see the KOF. 18 or whatever in it uh it was KOF 15 14 oh, 15, yeah. 14 14 14 because it followed up on 13 13 was the last sprite based KOF 14 yeah, was just, the first... 14 can I just say real quick that I absolutely hate cell shading games I, or it, graphics it, rather it's run its course Telltale and Borderlands did it too much I, I'd say yeah I, I solidly agree at this point it's usually, it's not, it doesn't produce anything interesting. It's usually just an excuse to have really bad graphics. Because <laughs> yeah. Borderlands and Telltale games, if they got one thing in common, it's that they both look fucking hideous. Yeah, and if you look at Haomaru's face at the end, he looks a bit nosy. Oh. <laughs> like, before the before the, the name comes up, he looks a bit nosy. But yeah, um... Other than that, the game actually looks pretty good for what it is. I mean, you know. Um, other character that I, that I saw in skimming through the video is Galford. Galford Pink, you'll remember as the ninja guy who had the dog that that, that, that was just called Poppy. Right. Yeah, so he's back. And actually, <laughs> I looked it up. It's not The dog is not called Poppy, it's Poppy. Poppy? Yeah, the flower. Poppy. Oh, Perfect. isn't that used to make heroin? Probably. I wouldn't. Put, I wouldn't put it past Galford. I mean, he he's he's an an American ninja. <laughs> oh, what what is it with Japan and introducing fucking American ninja characters? I don't know, but um, except in, in... KOF, which did a fucking Brazilian ninja for some reason. But yeah, in Samurai Showdown, um, I want to say Hattori Hanzo. Or Hanzo Hattori. I don't remember which way is the correct way to freaking say Japanese names. I forgot. Whatever. Are there like three fictional characters named Hattori Hanzo? Because I want to say that that was also the name of the guy that made the samurai sword in Kill Bill. And I also want to say that's Scorpion's real name. No, Scorpion, hmm. Scorpion might have been Hanzo Hisashi. Fuck. Yeah, he, he, he's Hisashi. Yeah, okay. But uh, Hanzo... 
It was either Hattori Hanzo or Hanzo Hattori that made the katanas in Kill Bill. Like, the legendary old master. Yeah, so the Hanzo Hattori here is a ninja. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I, from what I gathered, you know, from looking at um, animations from the older games, it's either that um, he, he trained Galford or Galford pays him to train him, <laughs> which is more or less the same thing, but whatever. But yeah, um, I mean, depending on the price, I might buy this day one just because some rash showdown. <laughs> if they're charging 60 bucks, you won't. Well, yeah, no, not, <laughs> not, if, not if they're charging 60 bucks. Well, keep in mind, they charge 60 bucks for KOF 14. Right, I forgot. Shit. I mean, SNK is not a AAA developer, but they certainly think of themselves as such. So, moving on to another thing that came out of T the TGS show, and this one's a little bit more pertaining to me. In case you enjoyed Addy nerding out about a game that the other two don't really know about, here's Alex nerding out about a game that the other two don't really care about. So, I fucking love the Yakuza games. And I don't believe either of you have ever played the Yakuza games, yeah? I played a demo. I've played nothing. Okay, so the Yakuza games, you play as a guy who's a Yakuza, but it, it's like only marginally. Because since Japan has like a lot more strict ideas of what can be a hero than us, like, we can have GTA San Andreas, and CJ is a fucking criminal who like, you know, is a pimp and an arms dealer and all that. And we still cheer for him, and we still see him as the hero. Because, you know, he's ultimately got a good heart, and he's fighting for his family, and he, you know, he fights much worse gangsters. Japan doesn't really do that. In Yakuza, it's kind of known that Kiryu, the main protagonist, rarely ever actually commits any crimes other than beating up a bunch of dudes in a back alley, and they always start the fucking fight. <laughs> and it looks like Yakuza has finally dealt with that issue by not being a Yakuza game at all, and instead coming out with a new game where you play as a disgraced lawyer turned detective who is trying to solve the case that ruined his career as a lawyer. And, it, of course, it looks like it's going to have lots of delightful Yakuza goofiness of not only just random mini-games of, you know, batshit insanity, like, you know, hey, little uh, RC car racing, why the fuck not? And <laughs> massive over-the-top fights, where they will insist your character does not kill anybody, despite the fact that you'll perform several moves that very clearly would kill people. I believe I've mentioned on here before... That Kiryu, That's the Batman method. Yeah, in Yakuza 0, Kiryu has a move where he f takes a handful of nails and forces his opponent to swallow them. And the developers still insist Kiryu has never killed anybody. You actually pull out a gun and fucking shoot people in Yakuza, and Kiryu's never killed anybody. <laughs> it's only rubber, <laughs> rubber bullets. Yeah. But yeah, um, I'm looking at the trailer right now, and you know, I wouldn't mind the sleeping dogs too. Even even if it's not actually Sleeping Dogs 2. Dude, you need to play oh. Yakuza. Seriously, Sleeping Dogs is like the shittier American version of Yakuza. And Sleeping Dogs wasn't even that bad. Like, yeah. th as someone who grew uh, up on playing Rockstar's Bully in the mid-2000s, whenever I play Yakuza, it's like, man, this game reminds me of fucking Bully. Cause... I, really want to play, I really want to play Yakuza, but I never have the 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, bloody hell, I need to save up for it. Uh, ooh, zero and zero is like double the price of Kiwami, but my understanding is that zero is the best in the series. I've not finished, can... I've not finished zero yet because I stopped midway through because I wondered if we'd ever do an LP of it, but I should probably just go back and finish it. I can actually check if zero and Kiwami are, are different prices because from what I remember, both of them are 20. Oh. They they might have changed it recently, but I think during a sale they moved zero down to thirty. But the last I remember, zero was sitting at thirty, and Kiwami Kiwami was sitting at thirty. Yeah, both of them are twenty. Oh wow, fuck! I bought zero for sixty dollars, like right before they changed the price. Fuck! <laughs> Don't you love it when that happens? Like, it, admittedly, Brian got me the hookup on a thirty dollar deal for it, so I didn't get screwed that badly. But still. <laughs> So, um, which one should I buy first if I do actually come into contact with that type of money? Uh, zero. Zero is earlier in the chronology and is a much bigger and better game. 
Kwame is a lot smaller, but I, I'm i still going to look into picking it up after I finish Zero, of course. Which one has better karaoke? <laughs> Zero. Zero is well known for the uh, one particular karaoke spot. All right. And if you do, if yeah. you do pick that up, then it is absolutely a thing that the three of us should record, because I, I need to see your reactions to that shit. Okay. <laughs> And we need to bring Pink along for the ride because you can suplex people through fucking sandwich billboards. Perfect. I'm sold. Ah. Uh, so, th the thing here is, this fucking name of this game, what the trailer is listed as Project Judge, which actually isn't a bad name for a game. I mean, it's still very Japanese-y, but it actually sounds pretty cool. But there's a good chance that it evidently might instead be named Judge Eyes. Which is <laughs> terrible. And I guess it sounds cool in Japan in Japanese, probably, but over here it sounds fucking stupid. <laughs> I suppose it's called Judge Eyes because your character is a lawyer turned detective, so I guess it's like, you know, Judge is related to lawyers and Eyes is related to, like, private eyes detectives, you know. I mean... It, Judge Eye with, with the subtitle, I am the law. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they should have just called it that. I am the law. Okay. Well, your character's very much working outside the law, given that he isn't a lawyer anymore. He's like an independent detective, but okay. No, I was the law. <laughs> yeah. I was the law, and then the law won. <laughs> <laughs> no, very much so the opposite. It, he would still be the law if the law had won. So, it looks like it's going to be a fun little, you know, story about that. And it's probably also going to involve a lot of how J Japan's cultural tr uh, traits are kind of bullshit. Like how if you, as a lawyer, fuck up one case, your entire career is over. And you are thought of as this tremendous fuck-up. And given that our character, the character has got a fucking jean, you know, the pocket chain, and a leather jacket, and the, ha the hair that's coming down in front of his eyes... Knowing how Japan... juvenile delinquent. Yeah. I mean, the guy's probably 30 something, but still, juvenile delinquent. So it's probably. I mean, it's if, pro if Terry Funk can be a ju juvenile delinquent, then everybody else can. <laughs> I... uh. <laughs> Terry Funk plays by an entirely different set of rules of humanity. Dude, what if you played, <laughs> what if you played as Terry Funk in this game? Yes, they, they should make that happen. <laughs> Terry Funk still has people in Japan, doesn't he? Oh, totally. Are you kidding me? Terry Funk okay, will have yeah. people in Japan for the next hundred years. Okay, yeah, def definitely. If if Yakuza can have freaking Okada, then this game can have Terry Funk. At Yakuza Kiwami 2, one of the boss fights is Muda. The great Muda. Ha, <laughs> shit. <laughs> does he if you beat him, does he te teach you how to spit mist? I do not know. I feel like that's a move Kiryu already knew. If not Kiryu, Majima definitely knew it. Someone in Yakuza fucking knew how to do the Muta spit. But if he did teach the Shining Wizard, that'd be fucking rad. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that, someone that, already should, knew the, I feel like someone already knew the Shining Wizard too, damn it. Someone one of these days. Probably freaking the makers of Yakuza should make make a game where you, you you it's a stylish hero action, but you upgrade your moves by beating wrestling wrestlers and then taking their moves. I feel like WWE actually tried to do something like that once upon a time, something stupid like that. Like what? Well, no, what was that fucking fighting game that WWE was hinted that they was supposed to be working on for the longest time that never came to fruition? All Stars. Oh, no. uh. No, it was like, I don't know, Brawl? Yeah, something like that, where Seamus was like actually a Celtic warrior with a sword or some shit. Right. Oh, you mean you mean the one they made with Netherrealm? I, I, it might have turned into that, but at one point that was supposed to be a full-on console fighting game. Right. Because it was oh. supposed to be like a sequel of sorts to All-Stars. Or it was at least in development by the same guys who made All-Stars. Right, and Cena was a military guy because... Can I just say that's the most infuriating, stupid thing about Day Day to me, that they... Per <laughs> the, the stupid John Cena association with the Marines, he's not an actual veteran. <laughs> they thought his movie was a biography. 
Like, that wasn't that initially what the interrupting Cena meme was about? Was they'd call people up and interrupt them with rants about Cena being an ex-Marine or something blatantly <laughs> bullshit? I mean, I guess their alternative for military support was Randy Orton, because, you know, he was a dishonor- he, he was dishonorably <laughs> discharged. Yeah. Uh. So, hey, uh, Superman, it's been a fucking train wreck for the last couple of years, yeah? Absolutely. Well, it sounds like it's a gigantic fucking mess whether Henry Cavill is going to come back for Superman at all. Because Warner Brothers apparently has been like, we don't fucking know. Because he was supposed to have a cameo in Shazam, and he said, fuck off, I'm doing The Witcher. And I I guess that's what he's going to do. And he himself is making it, Henry Cavill is making it pretty fucking ambiguous whether he's not going to return to Superman or not. Last I heard, he uploaded a fucking video of just a dog floating with a Superman cape, and that was it. Like, oh, that's <laughs> that's definitive. Way to help us, Henry. I mean... I told you all in the forum once I saw that Witcher news, and like, you know, he's got to grow a beard out for that, and the Witcher, it just marks the end of his tenure as Superman, and I was right. Thank fucking God. Yes. Like, people are coming out of the woodwork to be like, oh, he was great casting as Superman, it was ruined by Zack Snyder. No, he was terrible casting for Superman in the first place. You look at Henry Cavill, Henry Cavill... Looks like the kind of guy... What do I want to say? Huh. I, I was about to make, like, a very, uh... Pl- I was about to make a very rude accusation about the way he treats women. But I'm fi- I'm having a trouble... <laughs> having trouble figuring out a way to do it. But he's still let's right, let's right he, all he knows is go. Uh, maybe not so far as to say he's a rapist, but... <laughs> What I would have said was, uh, I would have said he he seems like the kind of guy that, to expect a girl to pay for dinner and then expect her to blow him anyways. That's what I was probably going to go for. But, yeah, I, I don't like Henry Cavill. He comes off as a douchebag. And when you get a Superman actor, he should not come off as a douchebag. He really shouldn't. But Henry Cavill looks like he sucks his own dick. <laughs> By the way, speaking of the Mitchell, mo- Mitchell movie, if the, the trailer is on it with Wanna Play Gwent, then I will be disappointed. I'm still confused whether Gwent is the card game or a person. It's a card, card game. Okay. So, yeah, Henry Cavill, thank fucking God, he's gone. I'm curious, like, I heard... I heard the most insane thing the other day. A family member, I don't know where they got this from, because I have not seen anything similar. But a family member th- said that she found an article that insisted Michael B. Jordan is being looked at for the new Superman, and I was like, fucking what? <laughs> I posted that photo on, or in the comic thread, or whatever. Of Michael B. Jordan as Superman? Yeah. Oh, wow, uh, that actually is a thing that my family didn't just make up? No, it is not. I think I saw it on Twitter via IGN. Huh. Let I don't me look think for it's, it. I don't, I don't think it, there are legitimate talks or anything. It's just some rumor that sort of popped up at around the same time that Henry Cavill stepping out as Superman came up. Uh, so it's one of those things where the, the, the rumor just kept circling and circling and circling until it eventually it's like everybody thinks Michael B. Jordan has... It's a thing. It's a game of telephone, basically. Yeah, okay. that's, what, that's what I'm thinking it was. So tomorrow we're gonna see an article saying he was cast as Superman and he super wasn't. <laughs> Honestly, like fuck it, I Michael B. I'd be happier with Michael B. Jordan as Superman. <laughs> yeah, I, I I said basically the same thing. I'd actually watch a Superman movie with Michael B. Jordan in it. Because, I mean, there's a lot of actors in Hollywood that you cast as Superman, and they're going to think, oh, I'm going to make Superman finally be taken seriously. I'm going to make Superman a tough guy, a real man's man. Well, people would love to see it. And Michael B. Jordan's one of the few guys in Hollywood who's probably a big enough nerd that he'd want to make Superman, you know, a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a guy who just genuinely wants to help people, not compensate for his small dick. Right. Yeah. But, of course, the issue of ethnicity will always be something that gets run into. 
And before, I would have been like, I, I don't know, I think it might be a bad idea to cast a black Superman. But after Henry Cavill, fuck it, bring it on. <laughs> See, I I think it'd be per- perfectly fine at this point, because we've already had Henry Cavill as Superman. Now we just write him out of the DCEU and write Jordan into it. I mean, it'll be kind of awkward and whatnot, but... Is Michael B. Jordan you know... going to play the Obama Superman? <laughs> No, he, he's he's just gonna be he's gonna portray Barack Obama with the powers of Superman. Addy, Addy, you are aware that is an actual character that I was just referring to, right? That is an actual thing that exists in the DC universe. No, but why? Barack Obama. Why? Barack, Obama <laughs> why? Is, Barack Obama is the guardian of the DC multiverse. I th- I thought you were going to say he's the guardian of the galaxy. <laughs> no, but pretty close. To core. More to important core. than that. More yeah. important than Guardian of the Galaxy. He guards multiple... The entire multiverse. Good lord. And they never actually call him Barack Obama, but every time the uh, main universe Clark meets him, he always greets him as Mr. President. So it's like, okay, it's fucking Barack Obama. Who are we kidding? <laughs> I don't know. I love comics introdu- introducing real people in stupid situations. Like, how many times has Adolf Hitler what, been a really super What's funny here is that both... Superman and Batman are stepping out now? Yes, and John Hamm is saying he wants to play Batman, last I heard. I'd actually... Okay, Pink really didn't like that suggestion because he just fucking left. So, I'd really I like... Think, I think he can hear us again. <laughs> so, yeah, John Hamm said he was going wanting to be Batman, and I'm actually fine with that. Because I feel like John Hamm would play a really good douchebag Bruce Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I could see, like, I have trouble seeing John Hamm in a too serious role, but I've never watched Mad Men. So everything I've seen John Hamm in was a comedy. So, you know, that that will be always be an issue. But I could see him, like, being able to pull off being Batman, you know? I think he'd, uh... Fit, well, the, the weirdest thing for me to say here is, I want to say this, John Hamm doesn't have a very fat face... And I feel like that's really important after we got Christian Bale Batman, where the mask was always too fucking tight, so his face was squeezing out of the hole. <laughs> and he always like that. That always led to the infamous Derp Batman from Dark Knight. You know. Yeah. Right. Where's the trigger? I don't. I'm not wearing occupants. Ah. Huh. God. Like, the rest of Dark Knight has aged very well. God, I cannot watch Christian Bale as Batman. It's so fucking <laughs> stupid. Like the most one of the most critically respected actors ever just turned Batman into a complete farce. Like I don't even know how that happened. God. So, moving on to a bit of news that isn't mostly just us speculating. Cervantes has been revealed for Soul Calibur 6. And uh, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I don't think anyone is. Cervantes was going to be in the game. Cervantes has been like in every game, hasn't he? I believe so. I want to like. Uh, I'm not sure. Cervantes is one of the only ones that's been in every game. Has Maxi been in every game? Hmm. Maybe. No, Maxi wasn't because uh, at first he was the the nunchuck character was Lee Long. All right. Yeah. And Mitsurugi, was Mitsuru, has Mitsurugi been in every game, or was Arthur his replacement in the original? I don't think he was in... I don't I don't think he's been in every game, but I, I can look it up. I do not I do not know if Mitsurugi has been in every game, or if Arthur used to take his spot with the samurai, the katana, back in the day. I feel like they, there was definitely several games where they were both in. I, I remember them both being in Soul Calibur 3. Uh, Siegfried's technically been in every game, yeah? Right. I mean, if you count was, Nightmare yeah. and Soul Calibur 2 as being Siegfried, then yeah, Siegfried's been in every game. Right. Song Mina missed the game, didn't she? Yeah, she totally yeah. wasn't in Soul Calibur 5, yeah. Right, because nobody was. Yeah. Yeah, Soul Calibur 5 broke a lot of streaks that, that day. <laughs> But has Mitsurugi been in every game, Addy? I'm looking for him. 
Uh, good luck finding him. He... Yeah, Mitsurugi has been in every game. Okay, okay, that's what I was figuring. So there was just a couple games where him and Arthur had the same moveset? Arthur? Yeah, Arthur, the Englishman with the eye patch, Blonde, ponytail. The English samurai? Do you not remember? I don't even... No, but not only that, I don't th I don't even see him in the list. Well, he was totally in, like, Soul Edge or something. Way back I when the game was that. actually named after the sword that takes more attention. Where the people who were in Soul, Soul Edge were Cervantes, Huang, Li Long, Mitsurugi, Rock, Song, Song Ham Yong, Song Mina, Siegfried, Sophia, Taki, and Waldo. Oh, wow, okay. Huh. I don't remember. I, I, don't see, I don't see. I don't see any others. I. I. There's Abyss, Algol, Amy, Astrod as well, and then it's just skips to see. I can uh, send the link over. <laughs> there's no way I'm just making this guy up. No, I'm not. I got. I got a fucking link to his article right here. I'll uh, put it in the Discord. But uh, there we go. Yeah, Arthur. And Arthur was in the first Soul Calibur where he replaced Mitsurugi in countries that discouraged samurai imagery and references, such as Korea, as well as several arcade machines in the United States. Why does Korea uh. discourage samurai imagery? <laughs> What's politically offensive about samurai? That's okay. Now, I... I don't know, I feel like Mitsurugi's not the only drunk in Soul Calibur. But, oh wow, yeah, I forgot about Song Han Myung. Like, oh man, that's the only picture they could get for the wi the wiki. Okay, I gotta put that in the podcast because it's just terrible looking. Yeah, get a look oh. at get <laughs> get a load of that. Is that's this awful. is this is, is that Mina's father? I think it is. Um, I don't know. Yes, yes, uh, Song Mina is his daughter, right. And to unlock him, you had to beat the game as Wong and then Song Mina. Man, I, I see. I forgot that Wong mattered at some point. That poor bastard has not come back since Soul Calibur 3, are you kidding me? Yeah, no, he hasn't. Wow. I used to play him back in the day, huh. But, yeah, so, Cervantes is back. That's good. More of the classic Soul Calibur roster. Please, less of whatever Namco comes up with now. <laughs> Ordinarily, I'm not, op I'm not opposed to introducing new characters or rosters. For Soul Calibur, I am. Yeah. Because Namco... I wouldn't be as opposed if all the characters that they've announced so far haven't been absolute trash. They're all fucking waifu fanfic shit. Who the hell is freaking grow? They're fucking... With, uh, with a strike duo. That that's the uh, that's the new darkness kid who every movie says darkness, 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 oh. darkness. You know, he's got he's freaking he's the guy from Kingdom Hearts. I see. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. When they when he's all the new, he's the when they when all the new characters are Kingdom Hearts characters, don't make any new characters, please, God. <laughs> like I say this as someone who enjoys Kingdom Hearts, but I enjoy Kingdom Hearts in a guilty pleasure kind of way, where I know it's hot garbage. And I don't want Kingdom Hearts ever to get out of Kingdom Hearts. I don't want it. Only... I don't want its garbage infecting anything else. It's fucking garbage juice. But see, since <laughs> since Grow is just freaking Xehanort, is he is he dressed in nothing but zippers and belts? Dude, do you remember the fucking uh, one character from Final Fantasy X that has her boobs hanging out? The goth chick, mm, the goth no. wizard chick. Okay, I don't know if you've ever actually paid attention to her design, but it's the worst thing ever. Well, let me bring it up. Because if you actually look below the neckline, which, you know, doesn't happen often with that character. But still, you know, it can. And let me bring up a picture of the character. Okay, let's see. Uh, where's a good one? Sure, this one will work. And now i got to make another fucking... Timestamp, you know, because I needed to get this thing edited quickly, but evidently that's not happening. <laughs> why? Why is her dress just belts? 
<laughs> what is that? Because they never, because the they never expected you to look below the neckline. That doesn't make even the slightest bit, bit of sense. It's honestly one of the worst designs I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> That's bloody <awful>. hell. <laughs> Uh, I now want to be able to make characters like this in Soul Calibur. Make it happen. Look, Final Fantasy X doesn't have to observe your logic. It's a game where a guy kills an old god by throwing a basketball at it. <laughs> uh, freaking the next... In in the Final Fantasy VII remake, they're, they're gonna remake Tifa's outfit, so it's just belts. Like, instead of, instead of a top, she, she just has a really huge belt over her tits. Isn't that an outfit that Ivy had at one point in Soul Calibur? Probably. <laughs> like you say, belt just covering the nipples, and I'm like, yeah, that that probably is a thing. It wasn't a belt that, but yeah, that was basically what her attire amounted to. It was just a strap, right? Right. And the weird thing is, Tifa had it the previous year, except it was made out of Leafs instead of weird BDSM gear. <laughs> God, why can't we go back to Ivy's old Admiral outfit she had in two? Ah. So, next topic down the list is, let's see. Oh my god, right, so this is a me and Pink being confused topic. The most unexpected Animal Crossing, uh, fucking Smash Brothers character of all time. Isabel from <laughs> Animal Crossing. The the most unexpected Animal Crossing character, Bayonetta. <laughs> right. So, I, I get wanting to introduce... Here's my thing. Who do you think this character is... What do you think this character's moveset is going to be? I think it's just going to be a, an echo of the villager. Here's the thing. She's not an echo fighter. Oh. I, she has I a new they... moveset. They gave her hope... a new moveset. Like, if they're just like, they... we need an echo fighter from Animal Crossing for the villager, then I'd get it. But she's not an Echo Fighter. She's got a whole new moveset. Oh, that's but, fascinating. With all these pa papers in the thumbnail, I, ho I hope she just uses them like shurikens. Make her a ninja. <laughs> we don't know yet. The only moves we've seen so far is she gets a fishing pole for, like, long-range grappling, which I did not... You look at that character, I don't expect her to be the long-range grappler character. <laughs> she's actually just Zang Zangief in a mask. <laughs> And her other her other move don't make it don't make a Zangief reference don't make a Zangief reference her other move is like she throws pu like she's supposed to be a clumsy fighter and it, all of her moves look like she's just accidentally hitting people, which I'm fine with because that that's actually kind of neat. Because I'm always a fan of the stupid goofy shit when they go with cartoon characters. Like you remember uh, King Dedede's move when the if you do King Dedede's regular attack while he's running he just belly flops. Right. And it's not even an intentional belly flop. He falls over on accident in that belly flops. Yep. Ah, uh, King Dedede. Uh, I, lo I love the stupid shit like that. But, like, the most unexpected fucking character. And the issue is, it got predicted by a leak a day ahead on 4chan. Yeah. It, I do recall that Isabel has been a reported leak for quite a while now, though. Not just that previous day beforehand, for a long while. Yeah, so that there is definitely someone in Nintendo, because there is no fucking way someone could have ever accurately predicted Isabel. Because I ha I don't know if either of you guys have ever played Animal Crossing, right? I have, but none of the installments up to a point where Isabel would have actually been a character. I haven't. I, I did. I do not remember running into Isabel once when I played Animal Crossing. And I played a game. Uh, which one was it? I don't know if it was New Leaf. It might have been the one before that. The first one on DS. New Leaf. New Leaf. Okay, yeah, I played New Leaf. And I do not remember running to her, into her. Though I think that probably would have been because I always played late in the day and she only showed up in the morning. But still, like, just the most random character, like... You'd think if any Animal Crossing character was going to get into Smash, other than the villager, it would have been Tom Nook, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Tom Nook just kills you with debt. <laughs> Which reminds me, freaking, um, just continue, but don't switch off the topic. Right, so... 
So, well, the next switch I was going to go off the topic was going to talk about what other characters have supposedly been leaked. So if you want to continue talking about Animal Crossing, talk about it fucking now. I need to look a freaking picture up. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, All right. They... Real quick, I'll say, as much as I'm surprised to see Isabel in here, even though I'm not because I saw the leaks, I'm really surprised that they haven't put Tortimer in because I think it'd be pretty cool to kick people around with a frail old turtle. So you mean Bowser? Yeah, but frail and old. So you mean Bowser? Bowser's a beast. You shut your ass. Right, but Bowser certainly plays like one. He's fucking low, <laughs> low tier as shit. Have I ever told you guys about the time I competed in a Smash tournament at my high school? No, you did not. Inform us. Okay, so I, I, I there was a casual bracket and a pro bracket, right? And I don't know right. why there was a pro bracket, because there's no way anyone in that school is a pro player, right? <laughs> I signed up for the casual bracket. And then they came over to me and like, uh, there's, they said there was a spot open on the, you know, actual competitive bracket and they needed someone and I volunteered and I went over and I was like, all right, I'm going to get my ass torn up, but they needed somebody to fill the spot. Right. Cause I'm, I'm not great at smash. And I played Luigi for the first round and just utterly stomped the guy. And the issue <laughs> is I got arrogant. So you know who I picked for the second round? Fucking Bowser. Oh, and you know who he picked? Greninja. <laughs> Here's the problem. I've never played past Brawl. Brawl was the latest Smash Brothers I played. So, I never saw Greninja. I don't know what the fuck Greninja's moveset was. And it was the longest Smash match I've ever seen, because that guy was legitimately just peppering me with fucking shuriken the whole time, but couldn't actually hit me, like, with any meaningful hits. But he was way fa faster than Bowser, who was just slow as hell. So I just could not get in as Bowser. And there was a fucking crowd. And eventually the crowd started, like, feeling sorry for me and cheering me on. Because I, <laughs> I wasn't losing, but I just could not get in. And it was the, <laughs> the worst fucking thing. And event like it, it got so bad that eventually he killed me on a lucky hit. And then just got a timeout victory because he had got one kill and I didn't. Right. <laughs> and it was so bad that the guy went over and said sorry to me and tried to shake my hand over it. <laughs> I was like, right. admittedly, it was more my fault for picking Bowser in the first place. I found the picture, I, I, more or less, but yeah. It could have been worse. I could have picked Ganon. Oh my god. <laughs> Tom... Tough fuck. <laughs> oh my god. That's how his Smash career began. O unless it doesn't, in which case he's still happily married. Yeah. It's so a he might it's not a be, because I've never seen his wife. It's a divergence in the timeline. <laughs> in one timeline, he loses the kids, and the other ones, he doesn't. In the one he loses it the kids, he goes to Smash, and he just pulls out a machine gun. He goes feral. <laughs> And Snake's like, I should have brought a gun. Why did I bring these rinky-dink landmines? Ah. Uh, so, yeah, they're also coming out with a new Animal Crossing game. In 2019, they won't say what the title is, but it's Animal Crossing. Somebody somewhere is going to spend the rest of their life playing that game, because it's Animal Crossing. Cross, cross animals. Ah. <laughs> uh, That's so, the subtitle, Cross Animals. Cross Excuse me? Yes, I didn't even cross so animals. Does that animals. mean like they've been genetically modified so you've got like a half box bear thing running around? And it turns into Resident Evil but Animal Crossing? Yes. And, and you're playing as Tom Nook or the villager running away from horrible mutant mixes of animals that shouldn't exist? A platypus alligator? Yeah, you're, you're, just, you're just trying to save... Like, the ga game imports your new leaf safe, but... But the game is actually a zombie survivor where, survival game where you need to say like it's kind of like um, what's the freaking game? Bloody, I forgot the name. What's the one with Frank West? Not Frank West. Dead Rising. <laughs> yeah, Dead yeah. Rising. Yeah. So it's just Dead Rising only. You're trying to save your um, Animal Crossing villagers from the from the mutated animals. 
you you start the game up and it looks like normal. Then you visit your neighbor. You walk in the front door and he's just eating one of your other neighbors. <laughs> yeah. And and every and every every day you need to go home to your freaking animal animal children and then feed them zombrex so they don't die. Well, I mean, you don't feed them zombrex. You inject it in their necks, but you know, unless you want to Close make enough. them eat the needle. I mean. Just feed them. <laughs> just feed them syringes. Fuck it. Same thing. I mean, if, yeah. I mean, if kid you can, if kid you can feed people nails, you can you can feed people syringes, and they won't uh, they won't die. The iron's healthy for your blood, kids. It'll make you grow up and help big and strong. You'll get Wolverine claws. <laughs> ah, so. Also, one of the people who leaked Isabel is also insisting that Ken I. Assume Ken from Street Fighter as an Echo Fighter of Ryu. I I can actually see that. That's probably one of the easiest predictions to make for Echo Fighters. Incineroar, which I assume is a stupid Pokemon thing. And claim, probably. And claims Dante will be released in November. I mean, not released. Uh, revealed in November. And of course, my bias here, I'm like, fuck yeah, but that it may be completely false. Because as Pink has said, there have been several people that uh, leaked Isabel before. So this guy could be just riding the train. But uh, a man can hope. Da right. Dante Dante gets released and then they like the day after they sneakily, sneakily release Virgil as an Echo Fighter. Well, the <laughs> issue with that is Virgil's moveset isn't actually very close to Dante's at all. I know. Nero would work better actually for, for an Echo Fighter. Nero also has way too much different from Dante to work. I just... I don't see any third-party characters getting Echo Fighters at all, to be honest. W just said that if the uh, leak is true, then Ken Masters will be in the game for you. Well, here's the thing, Pink. A third-party character has already got an Echo Fighter. Who? Which one? Richter fucking Belmont. Oh, wow. It literally well, just like got... Idiot now. Yeah, it literally <laughs> just got revealed. And we'll, I forgot they were even in. And Bayonetta is probably going to get Jean because Jean fights in the exact same way Bayonetta does. Well, scrap what I just said. Yeah. I'm pretty sure all the third-party characters are going to get an Echo now. Maybe even four. Please, God, let Sonic not get Shadow. <laughs> if Shadow... Yes, please put, please see, put Shadow in. People are convinced <laughs> that Shadow will be his own character. And I want to see that not happen just so they're all pissed off. God, I hope the issue with I do, I do Shadow hope. in is he'd have guns. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I the thing I hope for is that if if they put Shadow in, then every time you do a move, Shadow just yells, "Damn!" <laughs> See, I hope they keep Shadow as an assist trophy, but put Tails in instead. Put Knuckles in. Knuckles is an assist trophy already. Put That's Knuckles confirmed. in a playable character. Put Knuckles in a playable character as well. Not without Especially... Waluigi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Ultimate featuring Knuckles, <laughs> or, or rather, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Knuckles featuring Dante from the from the Devil May Cry series, with Waluigi. There we have it. Yeah, <laughs> with Waluigi. God, after all the like, honestly, I'd rather have Waluigi over Isabel. Let's all be honest here. Even if Waluigi's <laughs> only move is the stupid fucking tennis stomp. <laughs> Well, Walu Waluigi, Waluigi should should be like Deadpool in MVC. Well, Deadpool stunt in MVC where he just yells "wah" and that's that's all of his moves. <laughs> Projectile was. Yeah, he's a he's actually a, a dubstep machine. <laughs> ah, God, ah, you guys are idiots. So <laughs> they have also Nintendo also at the Nintendo Direct. Announced Luigi's Mansion 3, which is also kind of out of left field. I mean, Luigi Man the Luigi's Mansion games, I definitely remember them being big when I was a kid, but, I mean, striking while the iron is hot. Yeah. I feel like the second installment was, uh, like, DS exclusive or something like that. Oh, I want to say it was, yeah. Which would I be a big was. reason why I never got to play it. Luigi's Mansion but 3 is going to be a 3DS exclusive. So, uh, so, yeah, I guess they moved that over to the portals. Yeah, un unfortunately. 
I'm glad yeah. to see more appreciation for my boy Luigi. Yeah. I really but, enjoyed yeah. the first Luigi's Mansion, so kind of sucks for me to hear that both the sequel and the third will be on the DS platforms only when I do not possess a DS. But at least they're being made, I suppose. The memory lives on. Yeah. Maybe we'll see a but port you... to console, like how all those fucking Mario games get ported to console all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, W, you, you keep, keep saying that Japanese Japanese devs keep, keep striking, striking the, arrow, the arrow, yes. The iron, right? While it's hot. But the thing is, they're, um, they're treating video games as they tr- uh, treated traditional sword making. So they're heating it up, striking it, and then folding it and heating it up again. <laughs> And then it will eventually form a fine blade? Yes. That actually sounds... Aw- that's actually a great metaphor for something. I don't know what, but you keep keep that in the Rolodex, Addy. You'll be able to use that someday. <laughs> uh, does anybody fucking use Rolodexes anymore? What the hell is a Rolodex? The- my point has been made. <laughs> Another thing Nintendo revealed is uh, there's going to be a Capcom beat 'em up bundle, which now has been retroactively revealed for PS4 as well, and presumably Xbox One. I haven't heard about that. Yes, Xbox One as well. So it's going to be a big know. bundle of six games, and if you'll, I, uh, quick, somebody get the list up for me because I just realized I don't ha- know where the list is. Somebody click on the video. <laughs> somebody click on the video that I have up on Discord because I can't because. I'm recording the podcast. Yeah. Click on the video. Um, Where did I say the list? (laughs) It's in the description. It's in the description. Oh, joy. You mean like that? Professionalism. (laughs) Yeah. So, the list is... Freaking loud. (laughs) One second. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Oh, fast. So, yeah. (laughs) The thing is... Um, Final Fight, Captain Commando, Battle Circuit, Knights of the Knights of the Round, Warriors of Fate, Armored Warriors, and the King of Dragons. Boy, I forgot how much fantasy beat, how many fantasy beat 'em ups Capcom had back in the day. But yeah, the only the only two games I know here are Final Fight and Captain Commando. Right. Also, didn't Capcom didn't Capcom make uh, on Alien vs Predator arcades beat em up? Yes, they did. They also made a Dungeons and Dragons beat em up, a Simpsons beat em up, and a X Men beat em up. But all four of those would require extra licensing costs, whereas all the ones that are in this beat em up bundle are, you know, Capcom's own LPs, so they can just do whatever the fuck they want with them. Whereas Simpsons or X Men or fucking Dungeons and Dragons, God knows how much money they'd have to pay for that shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Not worth it. I'm. I'm kind of hoping one day they will release the AVP game <laughs> because it's one of the only beat 'em ups that I actually played. <laughs> right, and didn't it have didn't it have crazy cyborg Arnold Schwarzenegger? I don't think so, but you could play as all of the predators. No, no, I'm pretty sure there were two human characters and two predator characters. There were the two humans. One, no, you could. You, I was... think you could play as. I think you could play as three. Predators once you play through the game and then also had two human characters or something like that. You had a woman and you had a man. Yeah, and the guy was Cyborg Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was Arnold Schwarzenegger's character from the first Predator movie. It was Dutch. Ah. And the chick was some Japanese waifu. And she was real weird because everybody else had realistic, you know, realistic art. She looked like a waifu. (laughs) So she was wildly out of place in the Alien vs. Predator universe. And the Alien vs. Predator universe plays so fast and loose with canon that I'm pretty sure that that game is canon. <laughs> Good. <laughs> the Alien there, vs. There's, a, there's, a, there's a separate canon, canon for Alien, Alien vs. Predator. I have no idea at this point. It it might be the kind of situation where it's canon in the Alien universe, but not canon in the Predator universe. Because the Predator universe still tries to set things in modern day, but the Alien universe doesn't. Friggin'. How how can how can is Alien versus Predator in the Batman universe? <laughs> uh, dude, I think Batman actually like at least a couple of canon Batman comics. You can see in the background the sword that the Predators gave him after he beat the Predator. And it could you know it doesn't have to be taken as canon. It can just be taken as a little nod. But I'd like to take it as canon that Batman genuinely beat the shit off a of Predator. 
Well, it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> yeah. even Batman. It was Alfred that did it. Yeah. The sword belongs to Alfred. <laughs> Who are we fucking kidding? I... <laughs> one day, one day, the Injustice story will Im- invade the actual canon, and then Alfred will pick that sword up and kill people. Well, Alfred Maybe already Superman, probably. Alfred already beat the shit out of Superman in the Injustice universe, so fuck it. Injust- yeah, I know that. Injustice Alfred just can't be stopped. <laughs> Injustice Alfred should actually be a playable character in Injustice. <laughs> that, the reason he's not a playable character is because he's too darn powerful. I guess so. Yeah, if you ever if you'd ever match him up against Superman, Superman would just piss his pants and run. <laughs> Uh, he'd, he'd have like he'd have like dish combos where he pulls out the platter that he's always carrying around and he gets combos with that. Right. I I, I kind of hope that he he would be be a character based around um interacting with the with the environment, but they make it so you can you know set up your combos yourself. So they just have like um pieces of of the environment that Alfred would bring there. So like a a trolley with food on it and stuff like that. <laughs> So basically, like Tremor in Mortal Kombat X, where you can set up environmental shit. Yeah. Ah. So hey, not th- shit. <laughs> this Capcom beat 'em up bundle. I don't think any of us are particularly big fans of any of these franchises, right? I mean, Addy and yeah. I both have like a tangential interest in Final Fight because it's related to Street Fighter. So I mean, I'm I'm good. I'm always happy to see more content for good old Hagar. God forbid they ever put him in a Street Fighter game, though. Ah. I mean, y- y- you can't have Cody in his pants, though. Yeah. I love that attire because it looks so stupid. Oh, God. So, hey, that's that's the actual news we were going to talk about. But I want to bring up... So, today I'm probably going to be... Today or tonight or tomorrow, I don't fucking know when. They keep delaying it. But apparently at some point I am going to be fighting a hurricane. But someone else is intent on getting to the hurricane before I can. <laughs> so a little news story here. Shirtless man stares down... It, it's from Fox News. Shirtless man stares down Hurricane Florence with American flag in hand, just being free and American, he says. A shirtless man disregarded warnings from local authorities and walked out to a street in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina on Friday morning to stare down a powerful hurricane for the third time. (laughs) Despite officials urging evacuations, or at the least safely battening down the hatches at home, Lane Pittman was captured on film holding an American flag while headbanging to heavy metal music as Florence's 85 mile per hour winds and rain pelted him. Just being free and American, I don't let nothing oppress me, especially no dang frickin' hurricane, he told Fox Business Network reporter Christina (laughs) Partinovelos, who caught up with him after his stunt as he tried to fix a flat tire. When asked if he was doing this to go viral, he responded, I already been viral. I don't, I do not work, I do not, uh, I'm sure he's right. (laughs) This is, that, this that is all, that the all... first time he's run around near naked. Pittman, I mean, you, you, yeah. Pittman, who is from Jacksonville, Jacksonville Beach, Florida. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> it all comes together now. We found Florida, man. Yeah. No, you, no, you, you found ex Florida, man. <laughs> Uh, he became internet famous in 2015 after Fox News wrote about Neptune Beach police issuing Pittman a citation for breaching the peace when he played a raucous guitar rendition of the Star Spangled Banner and a verse of Ted Nugent's Stranglehold during a 4th of July celebration. W- what a fucking madman. What an American hero. His pride in the American flag carried over to 2016 when he stared down Category 2 Hurricane Matthew without a shirt on and while holding the flag, head-banging the entire time to Slayer's raining blood, his ginger locks flowed behind him in the fierce winds that at times reached 40 miles per hour. (laughs) Had a request for some hair action during that cane, I granted it, he wrote on Facebook at the time in a post that has been viewed more than 27 million times. Pittman returned to Hurricane Irma, returned for Hurricane Irma, 
last year posting a video showing him again jamming out to heavy metal music on the beach and holding the American flag. <laughs> this year, Pittman started a GoFundMe page to pay for gas and coffee as he drove from Florida to South Carolina. He raised $190 in less than a day. <laughs> so this, this, is, this is actual Captain America. <laughs> ba- basically, you know how people were like blaming Trump for the fact that Hurricane, uh, the Hurricane Florence is going to basically terrorize the Carolinas? Yeah, this dude Trump, is... Trump summoned it. it yeah, it's this dude Trump's is defense. doing what Trump couldn't. He's going to stop these hurricanes in their tracks, man. No, Trump heard about the hurricane. He was like, no, wait, I got this. Let me call a guy. Oh, yeah. he's on Trump's payroll. <laughs> Trump, Trump single-handedly pay, paid his will fund me. Yeah, Trump put, <laughs> Trump put forward the $190, but that was, that was, that was all he could. <laughs> Anything more was just too much to ask for. Um, I, this, I, I, this man is the defender of our coastline against these natural disasters, and we should be thankful for his service. I'm safe now. <laughs> this is no, what a real hero looks like. Alex might Alex. not have been here today to do this podcast with us, but it's because of this man, this shirtless man in the Carolinas currently, that oh, Alex is here with us today. Originally, yeah, they it, said it, it was going to make like we were going to lose power on Thursday night. It is currently Saturday, Saturday morning, and we are still fine. And it is because of this guy. Yes. Yeah. the The hurricane keep, keeps checking if he's still there, and he, and if he is, he, it's just <laughs> it just goes back. The hurricane wants to know that. Yeah. Once he goes back to Florida, we're fucked, though. Yeah. <laughs> A bit. The hurricane's just gonna eat the entire state. <laughs> ah. Ah, so there's a delightful bit of stupid news for the day. It has nothing to do with gaming or comics or any of the shit we actually talk about. I just wanted to bring it up because it's fucking stupid in the best way possible. Ah. So, hey, uh, what we got coming up on the channel in the next coming weeks while I'm busy fighting a hurricane? <laughs> Alongside this guy. <laughs> oh, God, not at the same time, no. <laughs> His area of effect is too strong. He'd hit me. Yeah. He he can handle the South Carolina by himself. Alex has to take care of the North. Yeah. Uh, so, I we've definitely we've definitely got some episodes of Bioshock coming up. Yeah, we we have a couple, we have at least one episode of the Forest and one episode of Dead Space left because I forgot about forgot that those existed. Oh. <laughs> I went ahead and put up the freaking uh, for honor. So yeah, um, we're gonna have a couple of episodes of Bioshock, and then we might have Terraria, depending on how I'm free. All right, and I presumably will be back from fighting the hurricane. I don't know Tuesday, and by then we I will definitely be looking into wrapping up the forest with Pink because we are getting extremely close to the end of that game. Thank fucking God. <laughs> and the journey's almost come to its conclusion. And we still have not got killed by a shark yet. I have no idea how. And of course, Addy w- and I will have to finish up Dead Space, though I think that we're still fair. I think we are still two sessions away from the ending on that one. It's still yeah, something like that. Yeah, I- I'd solely say two because I think we need one to get through the Ishimura and one to get through the final stretch. And after that, we're probably going to be looking into new playthroughs to be running alongside it. We're also probably going to need to look into getting more Bioshock done so we can get up a, bi- a backlog of Bioshock to keep the channel, you know, running, even during yeah, Mike's boss. Oh, after, after that space, we're going to go look into the, the Bizarre Adventures, I feel. Yeah, probably. So, that's what's coming out on the channel. And Pink, have you played Spider-Man PS4 yet? Well, let's go on a little story time with Pink here real quick. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. So on he Monday... Got, he got sent to Bel Air. Yeah. <laughs> Monday, I was not scheduled for a full shift at work, so I didn't get to check my electronics department or anything because I was gone before the store actually opened. 
So Tuesday, I wander over to the electronics, check out their stuff they've got behind the cases. So I'm looking, I'm looking, and I see, first of all, an Xbox One X bundle type thing that comes with that little Fortnite thing. What's a Fortnite? What's Fortnite's a Fortnite? Free. Uh, yeah, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. It was that stupid little Xbox One X All bundle right. pack. I'm like, oh, that's that's tempting. I should totally get one of those. Well, and I look five. over a little bit <laughs> and I see, oh, there's there's a tag that I'm looking for, but the PS4 Pro slots are empty. I didn't get to get a PS4. Fuck. Yeah, so I've I've been keeping my eyes out over in the electronics department. I eventually something's got to come in. If not, if nothing else, then just buy a normal normal slim with one with one terabytes hard drive or something. Here, and then here's the thing: I games. legitimately don't think they had any of those in stock either. It's like the PS4 section completely wiped out. I'm guessing yeah. I wasn't the only person in looking forward to Spider Man here. I don't Spider Man bro- Spider Spider Man broke it and stole all of them. <laughs> He's a menace. It's, it was the most hilarious thing because the Xbox section completely full, everything in stock, loads of back stock in the back. I'm sure PS4 sections empty. It's almost Nothing. as if Marvel is a hot property right now. I know. I I also came to the. Uh, revelation, I suppose, that my store still sells PS3 and Xbox 360 games. And I was kind of surprised at that. Oh no, all of them still sell pre- PS3 and Xbox 360 games. Are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, most I of didn't them know if we them. did because most of them fill our... up the clearance section now, but still. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that is true because I have seen that stupid little bin out front with all the clearance stuff. So yeah, and it's all that shouldn't st- have come as such a shock to me. It's all stupid. It was there. It's all stupid, shitty games like uh, you know some Nickelodeon games like iCarly and SpongeBob. <laughs> right. Just High School Musical. Hey. You know. <laughs> hey, pull, pull, pull the bin out and just um, put stickers on it so they'll send it to Hungary. <laughs> send it to Hungary. God. So you know, Pink. Um, I feel sorry for you, man. That you can't have Spider Man, but don't worry. I found a little video clip that will. Uh, fill the gap in your heart. <laughs> Let me check. Scroll down, scroll down. I'm going to have to put that in the description for the video. Oh, yes. Yes. One of the best video clips ever. <laughs> hey, this, is, this, is what makes, this is what makes Spider-Man 3 the best Spider-Man game. Those the graphics. Period. I don't know that what's the best about... That- Mary Jane's face. I'm assuming that's Mary Jane. That is just frightening to look at. That, that's supposed to be Mary Jane? It's not Mary Jane. It's just a random civilian. Okay, not... what I was about to say. Random civilian is just horrifying. I don't know what's the best part of that fucking clip. Is it the fucking civilian's fucked up eyeball face? Is it Spider-Man falling flat on his ass? Or is it the fact that the building just kind of limply explodes, like with a puff of smoke? <laughs> All of I think them. that's the best part. Like the cherry on top. It, it's it it's like a it's a jump cut of you suck. Like you know, it's like <laughs> it's like a, a spot in you know comedies where the the guy's like, oh I'm gonna I'm gonna have this uh, old soda, but it's rancid. I'll have it anyways, and then it jump cuts to them in an ambulance. Right? It's like that yeah, shit. Right. <laughs> it's it's so fucking good. Yeah, okay, that that scene is what makes Spider-Man Three the best game in the series. Not even the new one could top that. God, it's amazing! Like the fact that Spider-Man makes the pose before he falls over, like uh... he just flops down. He he ran out of natural um, webbing. <laughs> That's right, because his webbing was all natural in those films. <laughs> those films were stupid. Yeah, he, he he used he used too much. He he needs ten minutes to recover. <laughs> this never happens to Spider Man, he swears. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Spider-Man, Spider-Man's used to using it all up before, so he doesn't beforehand, so he uh, lasts longer. Uh, so hey, other than not playing Spider-Man, what do you do with your week, Pink? Well, Being I I did get around to watching the first couple episodes of Iron Fist. Oh right, uh, season two, right? Correct. Yeah, that just fucking came out, didn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I saw the teaser and I was like, oh, it might come out in, you know, uh, five months. No, no, it's coming out next week, buddy. <laughs> kind of how all the Marvel and Netflix shows have been doing it recently. It's like, I remember waiting so impatiently for Daredevil season one and getting so hyped for that. And nowadays it's like they'll, they'll sh- show a teaser, then a trailer, and then it's already out. Like, I don't know if I'm just getting older and time's going by faster, or if it just seems to be ubiquitous to me now. Well, like, I don't know. Something's if always out. Something's always there to watch. I don't know if it's getting older. Let's ask Addy. What? Okay, <laughs> that's your answer, Pink. <laughs> what was the question? Let's keep going. So, uh, yeah, how you is answered Iron it Fist? perfectly, Addy. How's Iron Fist, Pink? It's far more entertaining than the first season, which it wasn't that hard to do. There is a character or an actor, or I'm not sure what the combination is. That's just absolutely dreadful. Is it They've the guy? Got... Is it the guy from the hand? No, because I'm pretty sure he's dead now. Oh, oh right, right. They, that guy uh, died after he cut off uh, Misty's arm. <laughs> right. <laughs> I got him confused with the guy from uh, Kunlun. The evil, yeah, Davos. The anti-Iron Fist. Right. What's, what's his fucking name? The paper mache fist? <laughs> he can punch anything in the world and it'll break. That's its power. Right. So, this season they've got uh, Typhoid Mary. Oh, which, really? Yeah, kind of odd because that's more of a Daredevil villain for the most part. Yeah, I would think of her as either Daredevil or Deadpool, not Iron Fist. Right. Because, I mean, her whole thing with Deadpool was that she raped him, right? Uh, maybe. And I feel like she also probably raped Daredevil. Probably. She seems like the kind of character that specializes in rape. Yeah, that's what crazy will do to you. I guess I guess that makes her Marvel's equivalent to Dr. Light, doesn't it? <laughs> I, I remember that fucking... It was like Plastic Man that said, Man, it's like rape is Dr. Light's superpower now. <laughs> Terrible. But yeah, Typhoid Mary is just the uh I can't say absolute worst, but probably absolute worst a- actor on the show, and that's a show containing Joy or Joyce, whatever his name is. Oh boy, I can see that character being a fucking train wreck. <laughs> so did they implement the thing from the comics where she's got like three different personalities? Yes. Yeah, pure Mary, typhoid Mary, and bloody Mary, right? Right. Right. Ugh. So, so I can see the, I can see an act in my mind's eye. I am picturing an actor who is just doing the like the worst shittiest job of portraying the switch between personalities, <laughs> and portraying like bloody Mary or typhoid Mary as being like, "Ooh, I'm kooky, I'm wacky. Watch out, I'm crazy." Like like Trevor Phillips, you know? No, uh, there's none of that. Not, at least not yet. Oh, she didn't eat anyone? No people soup? No. No people soup. But during the like moments that I'm assuming are supposed to be, like I suppose, quote-unquote, psychologically thrilling, they just come across as awkward. Oh, God, do they use the stupid edgelord effects? Mm, I don't know what edgelord effects are, but... I'm going to assume no. Okay, okay. Oh, man, speaking of Edgelord, you guys seeing the screenshots of their continuing release of Titans? No. I saw a few a couple weeks back where they're all in their, like, suits or something. Only only Robins could be called a suit. Oh, yeah. Because Beast Boy is just wearing fucking Nico Bellic track, ju- track suits. And Raven's sticking to whatever goth kid clothes, which I guess I'm fine with that. But Starfire is still a streetwalker for some reason. Right. 
Why would they at stick the, to that? At the very least, Beast Boy is green. And that's more accuracy than you could say for others on the cast. Only his hair, though! Is, it the, is the rest of him not green? No! His skin is just normal white dude. Oh, man. It's only his hair that's green. Because I guess he needs to look like an edgy, cool kid. <laughs> that's terrible. He's not. It's not even cool, though. Because kids nowadays are into hipster and gangster shit or whatever the fuck little Uzi Vert is supposed to be. The, gu the guys with face a tattoos. Small gun. What? Little Uzi Vert. A small gun. I guess. I'm just going to assume it because Addy's younger than either of us. I'm going to hope Addy understands this stuff better than I do. I don't. I, I hate I hate mumble rap or whatever the hell freaking rap is right now. Sure. That, that's accurate. Yeah. So, hey, uh, Iron Fist, was there any good sides to it? Uh, Did Finn Jones well, learn how to not suck at fight scenes? I, I would say the fight scenes are much better than last season. Oh, Absolutely. thank God. Oh, thank God. But they haven't had Colleen do any combat yet because her character has decided to, like, take a, take a, like, a backseat or something. She's sort of, like, done with crime fighting, I suppose, at the moment. But she was, so, she was totally helping Misty for, like, half of Luke Cage Season 2. I need to go watch Season 2. Yeah. ASAP. Co Colleen plays a big part in the first half. And then kind of leaves for the second half, but uh, Danny shows up in the second half anyway. So there's Iron Fist bleeds into Luke Cage season two pretty hard. Uh, Be because what was the issue most people politically had with Iron Fist? He was a stupid rich white person. So connect him to the most socially progressive show Netflix. I mean, uh, well, Netflix Marvel has. But I've been I've been saying from the beginning, Iron Fist never should have got his own show. He should have started off as he should have started off as a sidekick for Luke and spread out eventually on his own. Right. Oh my God, are they going to do the Immortal Weapon storyline? Uh, because that was supposed to be I the don't one. Know. That was supposed to be the one good Iron Fist storyline in the comics, right? If that's the one from, like, the mid-2000s, I believe so. Okay, yeah. The one that was written by uh, the same guy that wrote Winter Soldier. What's his name? Greg something. Uh. Oh, I need to look that up. It's the guy who was famous for, like, that Captain America run leading up to Civil War. That was supposed to be one of the best Captain America runs there's ever been. Greg something. I, I'll... I can't remember. I remember the artist, but I don't remember the writer. I'll go look it up. You keep talking. I, f I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, Iron Fist, yeah. Uh, entertaining so far. Sometimes I feel like the M rating holds those shows back, which is kind of odd because that's supposed to be like a release for them. But like having random ass sex scenes in the shows really detracts from them. Uh, I'm sorry. What did you say? Did you say rand masked sex mask sex scenes? Random ass. Random ass. Okay, I I heard either mass sex scenes or masked sex scenes, and I was like, okay. <laughs> That's when you know it's really gone downhill. Or uphill. <laughs> Who knows? This could go any which way. Ed Brubaker. Ed Brubaker. Fuck. I was completely wrong there. Uh, yes, Ed Brubaker would have been the guy that wrote... Uh, let's see. Yes, Ed Brubaker was the one behind Immortal Iron Fist, which was supposed to be a big one. And he... Oh, no, he wrote the... He wrote the issues where Captain America was assassinated. Whoops. <laughs> I guess I fucked that up. So, uh, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure Ed... Ed did do a bunch of previous Captain America stories as well, in addition to the conclusion of Civil War. Yes, he did He did do the Winter Soldier storyline. He was the one that reintroduced Bucky. Right. Which has had a massive effect on the Marvel Universe and the MCU, as Bucky is now every fangirl's favorite. <laughs> what a revival for that character. Yeah. 
Honestly, that is more of a place than old Jack Kirby would have gave him. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the, Iron F the Iron Fist fight scenes are not shit. And not as bad as previously. No wing yet, so still waiting on that. Only about three episodes in, so, you know, kind of slow, as are most Netflix shows. Please tell me there's no Claire. No Claire. No Claire, as of yet. Good, good, because it looks like Luke Cage might have finally got rid of her, and like, I don't have a problem with Rosario Dawson, I have a problem with Claire Temple. Yeah. Just the most bland-ass character possible. I mean, she was fine when she was, you know, night nurse for Daredevil, because that was something resembling a character. But when she's just getting shoved into every Marvel show, just for no reason, no rhyme or reason, right. just kind of there, like, it, it feels terrible. All right. I, the the moment I most point out with Claire is when, back in Iron Fist, when they all go to China or whatever. I forget where they went. <laughs> I but, don't think it was China, but okay, let's keep going. It was in China. I know that much. I'm just using that as a example. Asia, it's, Asia. Let's go for Asia, because you can say. All right, fine. We'll play it that way. <laughs> yeah, let, let's not say specifically China. Fun when fact: Did you know very all? Clearly not. Yes. Fun fact: Did you know all white people are from England? Yeah, I'm well, pretty sure that's England how is my city. <laughs> well, yeah. It was when uh, Danny, Colleen, and Claire all go over to Asia to battle the hand and whatnot. And Colleen and Danny are the are the two with the most fighting experience. But Claire comes away from that little adventure completely unscathed. Colleen, on the other hand, it comes back near death. But Rosario Dawson needed a paycheck. Right. But Honestly, Rosario Dawson probably didn't purpose, even... But kind of negates the entire thing at the same time. Yep. Honestly, Rosario Dawson at this point probably doesn't need a paycheck. She just seems like a gigantic nerd. <laughs> uh, there's something funny about the the actors that just shove themselves into things because they want to be a part of it. Like that, you know, what other actor am I looking for that always puts themselves in things just because they're a massive fucking nerd? I don't know, I'll think on that. Anyways, uh, so uh, the villain of this Iron Fist Season 2 is the evil Iron Fist, right? Have you got to see much of him right. yet? We, when, when I last saw it, it seems like they've given him the power of the Iron Fist now at this point, three episodes in or so. Is it on the opposite hand? I've not seen him use it yet. He just has a new tattoo now. Okay. Wait, does Danny uh, Does Danny always use... Is my mind making it up that Danny always uses the right hand with the Iron Fist? Or, or is he ambidextrous with the Iron Fist? I'm pretty sure it's right-fisted, but it could very well be ambidextrous. Because I feel like that's a thing they should totally go for. If they're going to introduce an evil Iron Fist, he's got to have the other fist be the Iron Fist, right? <laughs> The Southpaw fist. Southpaw fist. Iron, no, Iron Southpaw works better, honestly. Iron Southpaw, perfect. So, hey, is uh, Ward still the least shitty character on that show? Well, no, Colleen's pretty cool, but is Ward still the second least shitty character on that show? Uh, I, I'd say they downgraded him to a massive degree. I've not quite enjoyed Ward at all this season. Okay, so they finally took everyone's advice and cut most of the corporate bullshit? Yes, they did. All the corporate stuff seems to be out. Oh, thank God. No more boardroom scenes. <laughs> All right. You signed up for Iron Fist to watch some high... high t uh, uh, uh. We don't know what we signed up for at this point. <laughs> Kill me. Uh all right, so you signed up for high-level kung fu action. Let's watch some fucking boardroom drama. Yeah. Entertainment. It is a fickle creature indeed. <laughs> Man, Addy's having to suffer here. Oh, yeah, let's keep going about Iron Fist. Addy, sit down. <laughs> sit down, shut up, and enjoy your spot. I've just I've just been 
Um, well, before the recording, for this is for the audience, I was playing through the freaking story mode of For Honor to get stuff. And now I've, I've finished it while you two were talking about Iron Fist, so I've been just editing the Arimusha. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, like, you're fiddling with a Rubik's Cube over there or something. <laughs> you solved it at this point. Ah. Uh, I became the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> I ate it to gain its powers. <laughs> no, he's. I cannot, he's I cannot twist my. Like th- Hurricane Man up there. <laughs> I, I can now twi- twist my body, my joints in 360 degrees any way I want. The, the, <laughs> the new superhero of Hungary. It, it's, 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 it's actually just Ruby Kerner, the guy who came up with the Rubik's Cube. God. All right. So, only three episodes in for Iron Fist, yeah? Just about. Three or four. All right. And other than that, what have you done? What have I? Don't recall. Just a lot of disappointment and Iron Fist. Sometimes at the same time. Yeah. I'm glad you got that in before I could. (laughs) You had it a lot gentler than I was going to give it. So, Eddie, you've been playing through the For Honor story mode, right? Yes. Have you done anything else recently? Ooh, let's go through the list of I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I pl- started playing Cube. Cube. I've never heard of it. It's a puzzle game. And yeah. <laughs> All it's right. a puzzle game. It, it's free on PlayStation. Sweet. So yeah, um, I did that. I bloody hell! What the hell else did I do? I I I know that I played through like five different games. <laughs> right, I finished um, uh, freaking not Gears of War, God of War. <laughs> uh, God of War three. Yeah. All right. Uh, what'd you think about it? What'd you think of it? Excuse me. Well. I didn't. I actually didn't, didn't mind the game. Um, in the like, I went through the game with or, or on on normal, and then um before right like before you fight Zeus, there's this Cerberus that keeps spawning, um suicide bomber do- dogs. Well, that's not that's not fun at all. Yeah. So. I had to turn the freaking difficulty down to easy so I could actually beat the shit. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, so even though I went through 99% of the game on normal, it still only counts as easy. <laughs> oh. I mean, but I yeah. suppose that's fair. Because you, you did have to switch to easy for that one fight. Bitch. <laughs> I mean, it it wasn't actually the Cerberus or the blowing do- dogs. It the blowing dogs, yes. And, but yeah, it wasn't the Cerberus or the the suicide bomber dogs. It were the freaking tapirs. The what? The tapers or whatever the freaking name of them are. Are you talking about or like not... that distant cousin of the ant eater? No, I'm mixing up the names. I think freaking. You're talking about what? like a random animal in Africa. I think. Okay, then, yeah, I'm calling it the wrong name. I'm talking about the freaking, like, horse-headed people, or, like, the deer-headed people. I do not know the names of those. Pink? What's that? You weren't paying attention, were you? No, I was looking over on the forum. Okay, what the hell? Fuck you. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) I heard you talk about exploding dogs, and I was like, oh, nope, I'm done. But yeah, what another it, day in the life of Satyr. Satyr, that's that's their name, I think. Satyr. S A T Y R. Yeah. Oh, what don't they them? have the legs of deer? I mean, the legs of uh, the hooves. I don't remember. I don't remember. The only freaking thing I remember about them is that they wouldn't bloody die. Good old Kratos. If he if he finds it and he can't kill it, he just changes the rules. 
Yeah. I, you know, the thing I did to actually kill them is just, um, you know, the fourth weapon that you, you get that from Hephaestus, the one where you just struck people. Fuck no, I don't. I didn't get that far. Yeah, so you get the fourth weapon from Hephaestus, where you struck, where you struck people. So what I did just is it, just, um, it's a it's an area of effect where it shocks multiple people. It works like the oboe in Smite, more, more or less. So what I did just freaking shock one guy to death, and then his corpse just was juggled by the electricity and shocked the other other people. Oh, okay, okay. Did you yeah. play anything else? Definitely. <laughs> the question is whether or not I will freaking remember it. Um, I found a thing in Samurai Showdown 5 um, where it's easier to beat the, beat the game because there's this character called Mina, I want to say. She's an archer, and instead of, you know, doing the archer like they like Green Arrow in Injustice, um, all of her normal attacks are ranged, and then Oof. she doesn't have a lot of and then she not, doesn't have a lot of combination moves. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of character. Yeah, Dolphin. she also looks like your. She also looks like your kind of character. Is that these or well endowed? W- well endowed. Okay. So it's but, Dolphin yeah. with boobs. Yes, do- Dolphin with boobs and arrows. All right, it sounds right up Pink's ass. I mean, Alley. <laughs> So yeah, um, so the thing that I found is that if you go through the game with that character, since you don't have to know anything about just the general directions and um, two buttons, I want to say, <laughs> you can beat it. I just go until the boss of the game, have that have that character beaten, and then switch to the character I actually want to beat the game with. <laughs> and, and the game still, still, still gives me the W. Well, of course it does. It, it's always how those arcade modes have functioned. Admittedly, I hate that system. I hate having to go back to character select every time I press continue. Just start the fucking match over. Ah. But yeah, um, give me like two minutes so I can check my freaking list of stuff. If I actually really don't remember. Right, I played Trials Rising. <laughs> I'm in the beta. Right, weren't you complaining about that game? Yeah, um, what do you mean complaining? <laughs> I thought you didn't like. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, God, I gotta sneeze. Oh, oh. Keep going, keep going. The sneeze is gonna stay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> right. So, I actually made a video about Trials Rising. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Shameless advertisement. <laughs> you should have listened to that in the part of the fucking way you talk about the video games coming out in the next week. What? Yeah! You cut out. I should have talked about that on the part where we talk about videos coming out in the coming week. Whatever. I I didn't know that what happens on my if, channel. If there's a plug, also... if there's a plug your channel spot, it is that spot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, so I I made a video. Um, but to sum that video up, the game is good, but microtransaction boxes. <laughs> I want. Why would those be in trials? <laughs> why wouldn't um, they because, be? Because customization. But your motorcycle's it, it, like a dot on the screen, though. You customize your driver. That's even worse. Your driver's even Can smaller. Can you see the driver? Well, barely. Because half but the maps yeah. are fucking huge. So, that, um, I like the soundtrack. It has some 41. <laughs> <sighs> Again, striking while the iron is hot. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it wasn't... some 41 from, like, 2002. It, it it was from their it was from their newest album that released like two years ago. Two years. <laughs> Some forty one still newest, exists. The latest. Yes. Some forty one. Some forty one actually came back to me two years ago, and then I'm not sure what they're doing right now. <laughs> and then they all retired again. Yeah. No one in music fucking retires. What is up with that? Rolling fucking Stones is still going. Those guys are fucking ancient. <laughs> For every cigarette you smoke, you take a day off your life and give it to Keith Richards. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the other side, you've got ACDC, and I'm pretty sure they're going despite, like, half of their members being dead at this point. Yeah, they actually are. They got fucking Axl Rose as the lead singer now. Why? <laughs> they, they do. It's just Guns N' Roses now. 
<laughs> Wouldn't that be something? They just get the original lineup of Guns N' Roses, but call it ACDC. <laughs> they, they call it they call it Guns and DC. They, they hope that if they call it ACDC, Alex Axl Rose won't be as much of a prick. <laughs> ah. Uh. But yeah, so I did that. Um, I played a bit of Conquer Rival Reloaded. Oh, con right. Uh, that's the remaster of the original Conquer's Bad Fur Day, right? Yeah, I own both of them. <laughs> okay, so did um, you did you successfully beat the massive pile of shit? Not yet. I'm on the door of the massive pile of shit. Okay. Have you fucked but the let flower me tell yet? You. Yes, I I have. <laughs> Pink, welcome to Conker's Bad Fur Day. Hi. <laughs> we're we're going to have to do a thing where, where we show Pink that game. <laughs> but anyway. No, fuck no. Uh, fuck no. You show him that game. We can't have every game be all three of... Like, I I can't be here for every video. That's true. <laughs> but yeah. um, freaking. Well, welcome to the Alex to and the Other Guys channel. Like, fuck. Ah. Friggin'. Um... Bloody. All right. Um, just let let me tell you about the joy of eating while in in the near near the great mighty poo. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's serenading you. I guess so. Uh but yeah. Um, I did that. I played a game called Jump Jet Rex. Never heard of it. My niece. Wanted to wanted to play it because it has a dinosaur on it, <laughs> on it in the freaking thumbnail. Boy, being a kid is simple, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Fucking dinosaur. The, 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 thing, the thing is, I had to download Sonic because she likes Sonic. I had to download Jump Jet Rex because dinosaur, and I also had to download Injustice because Batman. <laughs> All right. So that um, Jump Jet Rex is a. It's a retro platformer type dealio. Um, it's all right, I guess. All right. <laughs> well, yeah. When you're just going with yeah. whatever game a kid sees, you could go work, get worse. <laughs> yeah. I, I trust me. I had a Wii and I had a little sister. Like, how, how many copies of how many copies of Ninja Breadman do you have? None, but I think we did have a copy of Build a Bear Workshop. <laughs> and fucking Hotel for Dogs, I think. Some shitty old uh, Nickelodeon movie. God. <laughs> it's amazing what can be turned into games. Uh, it amazes me that shovelware has mostly died off in the modern generation. Because that, <laughs> that shit seemed like it was going to go on for forever, you know? You would have thought. Shovelware is alive and well on the on the 3DS. Oh, I'm sure it is. I'm uh, what well, Shovelware is alive and well on Steam, but it's just called anime games. Yeah. <laughs> God, you I you mean... guys as P you guys don't aren't PC gamers. You do not understand the pain of five years ago. You used to be able to go on the Steam store and be able to find something good pretty easily. Now you can't because it's just all anime shit all over the place. And it's all just fucking anime boob games. Well, Pink's probably happy, but for me and no, no. for me and Pink, even Pink has standards. <laughs> Though speaking speaking of um, anime boob games, no, of PC anime games, I, I guess anime boob games as well. <laughs> would it be would it be um, too would we be too far behind to do a Doki Doki playthrough? Oh. <laughs> You need your time and you want out. So intrusive or whatever. I forgot the lyrics. Addy, you, we are done talking about what you've done for this past week. I don't fucking care if you've done anything else. <laughs> so, I'm still trying to play Bayonetta. Guess what? I'm fucking bad at that game. Super bad. It, 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 it's awkward trying to get through that game. Because I get like a level or two done and it's like, I, I this is a great game. I feel bad for the fact that I'm so awful at it. But Bayonetta is still a ton of fun. Boy, Bayonetta is like absurdly powerful on the video game character scale. 
Because, I mean, like, before Kratos was... Kratos solidly took the, you know, the fucking cake for strongest video game character. Bayonetta is a serious competition. Because there are some parts in that game that are just Bayonetta effortlessly suplexing skyscraper-sized dragon god angels that can stop time. And it's like, yeah, this is more or less mundane for what Bayonetta does. This is just just another day in the life of Bayonetta. No wonder she's top tier in Smash. Yeah, no kidding. Oh man, did I ever tell Bayonetta. you guys, did I ever tell you guys about what happened at the last Evo Smash tournament? No. no. The two ga- Bayonetta is really unpopular with the Smash crowd because she's so good. The two guys who got to the final bracket picked uh, picked Bayonetta. They were both Bayonetta mains and had been for the entire tournament, and the crowd was booing them for every single match. <laughs> the final round, it comes to Bayonetta versus Bayonetta, and you know what they fucking did? Bayonetta has a hit, has an attack that she can charge, and she can charge it infinitely. She can just keep going. They both just sat on opposite sides of the screen and charged for the entire fucking match. Because the the crowd was sandbagging them so hard, they didn't play, they just charged up like some fucking pistol shot for the entire match as a way of saying fuck you back to the audience. <laughs> it was to go even further beyond. Yeah. Like, a, a management had to step in and be like, no, guys, seriously, you have to actually play the fucking match. We aren't going to give out prize money for you two dipshits fucking ar- around on stage. <laughs> I mean, on one hand, like, it is funny to see the crowd get told fuck you for that. And I mean, on it, Bayonetta is a character in the game, and she wasn't banned. If the tournament doesn't ban the, a character, then they are a free game. You can boo all you want, but they are, like, fair competition. And right. And if nobody can figure out a way to beat the person's strategy with Bayonetta, then probably they just weren't that good of players. I mean, God forbid. It's Smash. I mean, you know which characters are the good ones. You don't pick Bowser or Ganondorf or Captain Falcon. You pick Star Fox or you pick Bayonetta or you pick, I don't know, Meta Knight. Well, Meta Knight's not that good after Brawl, right? <laughs> not Meta Knight, not anymore. Oh, good. Thank God, because I remember he was just fucking broken in Brawl. He was stupid powerful. But, yeah, like, you pick... If, if they had ported uh, Brawl's Meta Knight over to Smash 4... He would have been on Bayonetta's level, but they didn't. He was nerfed to an incredible degree, so Bayonetta, Bayonetta can just sort of breathe on him and he's dead. Sweet. <laughs> Meta Knight completely dethroned. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, with competitive fighting games, the way I have to view it is, like, Marvel 2 has been, existed for, like, 20 fucking years. Like, how long has Marvel 2 been out? Since, like, 96, right? Right. And so Marvel... 22 years Marvel, or so. Marvel 2 has a 50-character roster. Only four are viable for competitive play. Do people fucking boo when you pick a team of Cable, Magneto, and Storm? No, because it's Marvel 2. You pick Cable, Magneto, and Storm. Like, if Bayonetta is, like, absurdly over the everyone else on the roster, either she needs to be banned by the tournament, or Nintendo needs to nerf her. But it is not the fault of the players picking her. Right. Uh, oh, I just googled, and MVC2 was actually released in 2000. Oh, shit, it's not even 20 years old yet. Wow, right. I, I did not know that. That game's only a year older than Silent Hill 2. Silent Hill 2 is way more technically advanced than that game. Yeah. I would have thought it had come out in the mid-90s. It is the most 90s-ass thing I've ever seen. I mean, fucking Cable's there, so... <laughs> oh my god, you know what's worse than Cable for 90s-ness? The character that Spike was based off of. That chick with the bone. Marrow. Marrow's in it. Marrow, yes. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Marrow and what's-her-face? Uh, The fucking... Mojo's chick with four arms that was always ha- hunting after... Spiral. Spiral, yeah. Oh, man, I miss Mojo. Mojo was, <laughs> ac- Mojo was actually a fun villain because he was so goofy. But at the same time... Like, Ollie? No, Mojo was, like, a fun villain because he was so goofy, but at the same time, like, he was a genuine Lovecraftian abomination. 
So you could still yeah. take him seriously because he was the thing that should not be. Ah. Some of that shit has aged well, some of it hasn't. A lot of it hasn't. <laughs> so, what else have I done? I put some time in For Honor, what I've learned about For Honor. I hate fucking fighting the level 2 bots. Because I cannot tech throws to save my life, and you know what level 2 bots love? Throwing. Throwing. Oh my god. Yeah, so here's how I counterbalance that throwing. Um, Const spam uh, lights, spam spam lights constantly. No, I my RB does doesn't work sometimes. All right, I so no. Um, what I did to counter it that is use gear. <laughs> like right now, I have top level gear for what level I am, which is rep four level sixteen. You and your and... gear. Yeah, and <laughs> now, um, even even if they can throw me. Which I'm getting better at, you know, breaking throws, but whatever. If if they can throw me, um, I can still take take down like two thirds of that health. Okay, I am not nearly at a high enough level with most of my characters to be able to just, you know, rely on stat benef bonuses. Well, here's the thing: I also upgrade my stuff. You don't because you try saving up for stuff, but I just upgrade my stuff and then later sell it if if you know. I if if it if it um outlives if you it outlives its usefulness. Yeah, I'd rather just get characters and executions. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I know I, you I'll... just want to get the shinobi. Yeah, I I I just can't have enough of that stupid fucking Naruto run. Fuck. I think I popped the mic there. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I'm probably... I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to go for the Highlander or the Shaman. Because, I mean, the Shaman does seem like fun. But, yeah, whatever. I played for Honor. Uh, playing against people gets really fucking annoying. When you run into the Warden gank herds that do nothing but run around and search for solo people and never actually engage in team fights. Yeah. The, the Wall of Soldiers. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> oh my god. Right, uh, on to less infuriating bits. Haven't got time, haven't had time to play Spider-Man this week, unfortunately. So, whenever we, uh, whenever Pink starts playing, we'll be able to talk more about Spider-Man, I guess. I'm still stuck, like, at, I'm not stuck, I'm still, I still haven't got past the, I just barely passed the second Shocker fight, that's roughly where I am. Let's see, what else did I do? Other than that, I believe there's not much other than I got a new set of Warhammer 40k miniatures to paint. I'm considering setting up something, I don't know, if, either on the Discord here or on the forum, like setting up a new thread. I'm considering like setting up where I could just, you know, uh, show off some of the Warhammers I paint. Uh, evidently not Instagram though, because evidently Instagram is like the personification of narcissism. <laughs> ah. Instagram, Instagram is Sid. I guess. Well, I, I was trying to turn it into like a, a side jab at somebody on the forum. Then Addy just fucking calls somebody out. Like, I'm not. I'm not talking about or Sid. Oh, I'm talking about the rest of Sid. Oh, si wasn't his? Wasn't his? Wasn't his nickname the narcissistic? No, that was Lex Luger. Different. Yeah. Okay, then it's Lex Luger. <laughs> Sid has absolutely no reason to be narcissistic whatsoever. Have you seen that man's face? <laughs> I, kinda... I have seen him try to rip a shirt. That was enough. <laughs> uh, I'm twice as tough as you are, and I have half the intelligence. Ah, <laughs> uh... you know, you know, I, I I've heard clowns suggest we should do like a movie night. Of an actual movie. No, we need to do a movie night of the stupid botchamanias. <laughs> yeah. We need we need to do a mov movie night of the best promos in wrestling. And by best, <laughs> Addy means worst. Yep. It, it's it's just one and a half hours of freaking Ultimate Warrior promos. Uh, no, no, you can mix Even it. Even those aren't the worst. They're unintelligible, but they're not the worst. You load up the rocket ship with the fuel. <laughs> uh, you'd have to include in there, you know, Scott Steiner percent. 
Uh, Scott, right. and, and, and then and then the right gay man from Hulk or from Hulk Hogan. Yep, Scott Steiner uh, when the Japanese attacked us on D Day. <laughs> or when the Germans ha- attacked us on Pearl Harbor, it's D Day all over again, baby. Or whatever it was he fucking said, where he just conflated every World War II historical event and nation ever. <laughs> it all happened at the same time. Yeah. Just one big fucking explosion. <laughs> Six million actually, Soviets it, died. It actually, World War II was actually actually the ultimate showdown of Ultimate Destiny. Oh, what else, what else should go up there? Iron Sheik, uh, put you in the camel clutch, break you back, fuck you in the ass, make you humble. Uh, any time, anything from Vampiro, probably. <laughs> Freaking any any modern Juventud Guerrero promo. Probably. Any modern Matt Hardy promo where he threatens to throw people into the Lazarus pit. Ah. Wrestling's fucking stupid. (laughs) Other than that, I don't think there's really much I did this week. So, we should be good to... Wait, did I watch a movie this week? Did I? Shit, I don't remember. I do not fucking remember if I've watched a movie this week, so let's hope that I didn't. Hey, you guys, <laughs> it's, it is, that's a podcast. We were sitting at an hour and 50 minutes, so I'd say let's wrap this up. Say bye, Addy. Bye. Yeah.